Today we're going to talk about using Spark for more big data analytics with the New York City Taxi Trip Record database. So if you watched earlier, there was a demonstration downloading the trip record database from AWS using the AWS command line interface. If you've not watched that, go back and check it out. Uh, there's a one-liner that gets us a great big pile of data about New York City taxi rides. And so here we are going to uh, load these data into Spark and explore them a little bit. These are substantially larger data than, uh, than our other example with the Alpha Vantage web API for stock market data. Uh, so we're not gonna wait around for uh, all of these examples to run, but we are gonna load the data in and uh, check it out a little bit, do a little bit of data manipulation and filtering so that we can see the power of Spark live in this session. All right, so once again, we are in the terminal here uh, inside of an R Studio window. And uh, I wanna look at what we've got for the New York City taxi files before we get going in Spark. So now when I do LS NYC taxi, the data are available and uh, I've got the miscellaneous folder and the trip data folder. Uh, most of what we want is in the trip data folder. And if we LS that, we could see that we've got uh, kind of three different categories here, the FHV, four higher vehicles, the green taxis, and the yellow taxis. And I think that's about it. Uh, oh yeah, and four higher, four, four higher high volume data, uh, which I'm not sure We'll have to look at the metadata to see what the difference is between those two. Uh, four higher, high volume, and four higher. So we'll have to check that out. So we've got all of our data files here. Um, you know, we might be interested just to try and predict what we've got coming down. Uh, I'm I'm curious how much data there is, so I'm going to use the command du dash sh nyc taxi uh, trip data, and I'm going to run that. And uh, it's 297 gigabytes of raw data. And so we're going to try and see how Spark handles that, reading that much data in. Um, you know, as a reminder, if you were to try an operation like that with standard read tools in, uh, in something like R or Python or uh, SAS or you know, SPSS or anything else like that, uh, most of those tools are going to have a problem when it goes to read these data, it's going to try to read the data into memory, into into uh, your computer's memory, and uh, and there are it's the rare machine that's going to be able to handle 300 gigabytes. So this is a place where where Spark is going to do us a favor uh, because it's not actually going to read all of those data. It's going to map the data out into chunks that are digestible in the Spark engine and uh, and it's going to operate on each of those independently uh, using these internal algorithms that are going to uh, that are going to run fast and are going to split the data up and do some of this work in parallel so let's check that out so we're, we're going to start the spark shell and see what we can do All right, so we're gonna do our data, our Spark imports again, like we did before. If you if you didn't watch the Alpha Vantage session with Spark before this one, you can go back and watch it, or you can check out the uh, GitHub script page that's linked at the bottom of this video, and you can see the commands that I just ran there. But we just imported some uh, some Spark functions that we're going to use to read our data. All right, so once again, we're going to define a val. I'm going to call it this time taxi data, and we're going to make that equal to the output of Spark read uh, read CSV. Yeah, Spark doesn't like single quotes, so best not do that. 
And our option is where we set header equals true. Well, not equals, but header is true. And we're gonna load all of the data from NYC taxi slash trip escape slash, so backslash data asterisk. All right, let's see if I got that right. I think I did, I think I did all right. Let's run it and find out. Ooh, it doesn't like our escape slash. Okay. Oh, I suppose it doesn't matter since it's double quoted. It should be okay. So let's get rid of that. There we go. And now we sit back and wait. It's got 300 gigabytes to read. It might be a minute. Failed to get global temp, but that's cool because, you know, Bark, it'll figure it out. It warns us about all kinds of stuff, but it figures it out. And then there it is. It's done. Like, what was that? Like, well, I don't know. I'll look at the video later. Probably. 10 seconds, five seconds. I may cut part of that out of the video. So it's gonna look even faster for you, but it was fast. And now we can take a peek at our data. All right. Well, everything's gonna move just a tad slower with this data set because it is big. And here's some of our data. It's a little bit funky to read this way, but we can see we've got all of our fields that we would find in those CSV files, pickup time, drop off time, number of passengers, how far they went, latitude, longitude, and uh, you know what it costs. So that's pretty good. Uh, we've got our data in. Let's see, uh, how much do we have? There's 300 gigabytes, uh, a couple dozen, files so taxi data dot count is what what's our volume here uh, this might actually be a minute so this time it says uh it's got us broken up into 2400 chunks these were bigger files so they got chopped up into pieces so we're uh about three minutes into the count operation it's cranking along I wanted to show you if we can pop over to a new terminal, uh, how busy this is. So pop over to terminal two and show what it actually takes to count the number of rows in 297 gigabytes. Okay, so we've dropped into a new terminal and we're gonna use the utility. This is outside of Spark. This is just a Unix utility. And we're going to type the word top and run this. And so we can check out all of the tasks that are happening on this computer right now, which, uh, you know, it's Friday evening. Nobody's, uh, nobody's running their scientific computing tonight, but uh, we've got me <laughs> and uh, this one job, which is listed as a Java job. That's our Spark operation. Uh, the important things to note here, uh, it's not using a ton of memory. Um, these are relatively small numbers. It would have a, a, a G after it if it was gigabytes. So these are relatively small numbers. And uh, it's using a lot of CPU power. So uh, that percent CPU is, uh, that corresponds not, it's not, you know, 1100% of all the CPU available on this machine. What that's saying is um, it's 1100% or 1,000% well, you know, of one CPU core. So it's split this job up and uh, Spark is system aware. So it's scaled this job up to run in parallel. It's reading different files all at the same time uh, across about 10 cores. So in theory, it should happen about 10 times faster than a single core operation. But in my experience, that's never quite how it works. And here we are about 45 minutes later. Uh, that was a little bit slower than I expected, but it got through it and counted up. Uh, what do we got? Uh, 2.7 billion rows, so 2.7 billion rides uh, that we have data for on the last 10 years or so. 
Whew. All right. <laughs> okay. So there are a couple other funny things here uh, that we should correct. One of those is that uh, those column names all have spaces in them, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so here's a bit of code. I paste and then talk through. Uh, it's going to create a new data frame called new DF. And then here's a spark for loop. So for every column in the taxi data columns, we're going to create a new, uh, a new with column renamed. We're going to rename column with, uh, we're going to re replace the spaces with nothing is how that reads. And then we're going to replace taxi data with new DF, create a new new val called taxi data that has those column names fixed. We can go through and get the uh, the path expressions, or sorry, the path for each uh, each of these uh, files that we read from with. So we could go through and get the paths uh, to each of the input files with the same code that we saw for the AV data, alpha advantage data. Uh, we don't necessarily need that for the taxi data. So we can skip over that and experiment with a bit of filtering. Uh, I'm gonna run one of these and then we'll sign off. Uh, but here are two examples, uh, filter for fair amount greater than $1,000. Uh, I suspect this, these are mostly errors, but those might be interesting to go through. Uh, and then a different one, filter for trip distance greater than 100 miles. So I'm gonna try the second one of those first. So filter to, that's it, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I gotta do val filter to, that's what we're gonna call it. Uh, the output of this, and what we're gonna, the function we're gonna call is taxi data dot filter on column trip distance greater than 100. All right, and let's run that. We'll take a peek at how it's running and then we'll end it. Uh, if you have the data available to you and you wanna give some of this code a try, check out the, uh, the Spark script at the GitHub link linked with this video. Okay, allegedly that was pretty quick. So let's try filter two dot show. And we'll see if it gives us something back here. Well, while this runs, I will go ahead and sign off and uh, you can check out this code for yourself and give it a try. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll post the end of this uh, filtering step if it doesn't run too long. But it seems to be cranking along. It will find us some answers here eventually. And yeah, our Java job is uh, is cranking along still. So it's definitely doing some searching. All right, we'll call it here uh, and we'll see what we get when we try this out.